Thank you for joining us for this panel session, Turn Your Data into Dollars. My name is Addie McNamara. I'm a sales engineer with ThoughtSpot, and our panelists today are Noah Sapella, president at BridgeNet Solutions, Craig Hoffman, vice president of data engineering and architecture at CWT, and David Rowland, CTO at Star Compliance. Across all their different industries, our panelists are brought together by the common theme of using embedded analytics to fuel business growth. In this session, they'll be discussing the best practices you need to execute everything from data monetization and building new data apps to creating more personalized customer experiences. Let's get started. I'm hoping that each of you could just tell us a little bit about your role and your organization. Uh, Noah, do you think you could kick us off? Yeah, sure. So my name is Noah Sapella, the president of BridgeNet Solutions. We're a part of a broader enterprise called PSA BDP. Uh, and in essence, we're a data analytics company in the supply chain space, orchestrating empowered supply chains uh, and synchronizing data to, to drive value on behalf of our customers. Great. Thanks so much, Noah. Um, Craig, what about you? Yep. Hello, I'm Craig Haffen, um, VP of Data Engineering and Architecture at CWT, and we're a travel, com travel management company, which means that we look after all of your corporate business travel. Awesome. Thanks, Craig. And David? Yeah, howdy. As you said, I'm a CTO at Star Compliance. We're a uh, employee compliance software company, and so we help organizations, mainly financial services organizations, manage the risk of their employees and any conflicts of interest that they have. So we're headquartered in the DC area, but we've also got a, a large presence in the UK, uh, about 300 customers globally. Great. Thanks, David. Um, I guess my next question then to each of you would be kind of what challenges were you looking to help your customers um, solve for using data? Uh, Noah, do you think you could kick us off? Yeah, happy to. Thanks, Addy. And uh, so, you know, in the supply chain and logistics arena, I think one of the key challenges is fragmentation. So you have a lot of regions, uh, a lot of modalities, and a lot of business function trying to coordinate action, uh, but with a fragmented set of information. So it becomes challenging when you have things like port strikes or uh, elements like Suez Canal, uh, for instance, right? And I, I think now, more than ever, you have more familiarity in the supply chain space or with, with the phrasing holistically. But in essence, embedded analytics helps us bring all that together, tie it all together in a seamless way and display that back to our customers in a more simplified manner. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, David, what kind of challenges were, were you looking to solve with data? Our primary customers are really compliance teams within financial services organizations. So there's those compliance teams are responsible for making sure that their employees are following all the different regulations that they have to uh, form to for the different regulators around the world. So some of our clients have got 60, 70, 80,000 employees, and these compliance teams tend to be quite, quite small. So there's a lot of different activities they're trying to monitor, and they're trying to cover a lot of people. So we're all about trying to bring that data together for them to make decisions on. Uh, as it pertains to the risk and the different compliance programs that they're trying to support. So it's really about trying to empower that small set of users with lots of data across all their employees to help simplify their decision-making process. So presenting data to them that helps them see the, the, the wood through the trees, right? So to simplify the decision-making process um, and just focus on the things that are most important. Yeah, I think that rings true in a lot of organizations. Um, Noah, could you maybe tell us um, what specific types of use cases you're addressing using ThoughtSpot? You know, we see it as a vehicle to speed up information flow. You know, one of the key challenges is, especially in tabular environments or environments where you're looking at historic data sets, is you're making decisions in arrears. So in transportation or logistics in the supply chain space, speed is, is key. So a lot of decisions need to happen in real time and are synchronized with order systems, finance systems, and, and mul multiple elements within the organization. So if you look at kind of a, a key use case, it might be a uh, financial impact of changing a routing, for instance, where we're able to furnish that information in a more seamless manner 
from multiple sources, right? So you'd have the inventory stats, you'd have the cost elements, uh, and also the transport impact all in one place furnished back to the customer. Yeah, I hear that need for for real time analytics um, frequently. People that want to have their data now so that they can make a faster business decision around it. Um, Craig, what what kind of use cases are you addressing with ThoughtSpot? Um, many and varied. Um, our users are both, you know, CWT customer care managers, which we actually call program managers, and your travel managers, i.e., your our clients are. Um, are, are the corporates. So we really look to have that conversation between um, between our account managers and the travel managers within our customers. And we use the embedded ThoughtSpot to enable that two-way data communication between us and our customers. The main use case for ThoughtSpot is really to make our our clients look knowledgeable about their about their program, really get access to that that data in as quickly as possible and really just answer the answer the questions that really have to be at their fingertips. Um, so because we don't necessarily know what sort of things are going to happen, especially with the last few years in travel, as you can imagine, it's changed significantly. Yeah, 100%. Um, David, does that kind of ring a bell to you? What are the use cases that you see for, for a tool like ThoughtSpot? Yeah, there's a lot of commonalities there. I think, um, you know, I think our, our platform is made up of a number of different modules and the analytics piece is a really good way of some, trying to bring all that data together and, and make sense of things that you know might be happening in different parts of the compliance group. It's a really good tool for our compliance officers to get that 30,000 foot view. Um, I mean, what, one of the, an interesting use case I was actually talking to a customer about recently was um, a big part of our platform is around supervising personal trading. So trading that employees are doing outside of work for their own investments and you know, that has to be monitored in a financial services firm. And some of our analytics are helping compliance teams look at anomalies and outliers around, you know, pods of people that maybe never traded before, all of a sudden they're doing 200 trades a month. And just being able to bring those insights together quickly, uh, it, it just gives them a, um, you know, prioritizing where they spend their time looking at, at, at things that should should be investigated. Yeah, and I think when you're trying to kind of give um, data to really those people that are making decisions like that, in your case, maybe a compliance team, um, the idea of like self-service analytics becomes really crucial. Um, so I'm curious, maybe Craig, if you could talk to why search and self-service is kind of critical to your users' analytics experience. Um, how does kind of that ability for anyone, including non-technical users, to interact with live data add value to your users' experience? Yeah, I think I think we really took the view that we just wanted to get out of our customers' way. I mean, yes, we can, you know, think of all these nice looking dashboards and very pretty and and everything else and deliver that on a regular basis. But actually we we can't think of everything as 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 smart as we are, you know, we can't we can't answer every question, even with, you know, parameterization of things like that. So therefore, embedded search really gives our customers that power to quickly answer those those tricky questions in a in a in a very a very simple way and a very fast way. And it allows them to really just, you know, play with the um the data to get to their answers. So, you know, you might actually do a search and then that leads you onto another search or another question or another question. And I find people actually getting, you know, very reliant on that that b ability to answer the questions and, and when they get used to it they start to tailor their own live boards for their own organization so we truly are out of their way and and empowering them with you know the power of their data yeah i used to sit on like a central data science team and i would make the joke that we weren't just data scientists we were mind readers because we were trying to think of all of the follow-up questions that anybody could possibly ask of, of a dashboard. Um, so it's really nice to be able to kind of give that to end users and uh, give up the mind reading uh, capabilities. Um, David, is that something that, that rings true to you? Um, do you feel like self-service is an important aspect of, of your organization? Absolutely. Um... And I, and I think we've still got some work to do. And yes, you know, one of the reasons why we've, we've, we've gone down this journey, there's a, there's a lot more that we want to move into the platform to self-serve 
even more use cases. You know, I think our users are um, are not technical by by nature, right? They're, they're not data scientists. They don't have uh, big teams of data scientists that sit behind them to do all their data bunging and number crunching. Um, and they don't have time to learn complex BI uh, tools and, and platforms. So being able to give them a simple interface to, uh, as you say, be self-sufficient in, in finding what they're looking for from the data, that's really powerful. And that's, you know, that's, that's a differentiator for us. You know, I can assume that with that uh, concept of self-service analytics and trying to get the data in the hands of the, the true end users, um, that it takes um, a bit of strategy around deployment of a tool like this. Um, Noah, do you think you could talk to uh, the process of deploying ThoughtSpot within your team? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, we work with a lot of product owners and have product owners within our organization as well. And uh, a key exercise would be stakeholder mapping. So uh, one of the elements, you know, with kind of the streamlined and easy view and also this concept of, of self-service is just that the views are going to look different, right? A, a corporate board is going to look at something different than an operator or someone who's looking at solving day-to-day -day problems. So, uh, you know, we have broad technical teams in the solutions architecting space and, and also in the data engineering space holistically. So really furnishing that and having so much flexibility within what things look like, you know, a grid view or a more operator view versus that high level kind of uh, bird's eye or 30,000 foot view to, to borrow the earlier phrase, uh, you know, with, within those gradients. So, so having, uh, you know, the ability to, to talk to and, and have the support, right, of the, of the teams as well from a deployment perspective uh, through those gradients uh, was key to our deployment strategy. Greg, what what was deploying ThoughtSpot like for you and your team? Well, it was it was over five years ago now that we actually started our deployment to ThoughtSpot. So, um, you know, it's been through many different iterations um, within CWT. We really started, I suppose, to add it to our existing tooling, really, because that that search bar, that that flexibility um, to answer your own questions, was what really attracted us to it in the first place. So we started there, and it's really um improved our end users experience and product to no end over the years so the growth within um the the rollout of thoughts has been more both mechanical i.e we've we've pushed out new features allowed people to bring their own data in and their own metadata organize you know all the different countries in the different ways that they want to report in it and stuff like that as well as organic with many internal use cases coming and knocking on our door and saying, please, can we put our data in there? Because we've seen what you're doing externally. Can we have the benefits of that as well, please? Um, so we've really expanded over that five years with many, many different data sets and many, many different audiences as well um, in there. And I must say, every time we've expanded, every time we've, we've migrated, because we've migrated from on-prem to cloud data warehouse as well, over that five years has been, you know, pretty easy to do. Glad to hear. Um, you know, at ThoughtSpot, we're seeing more and more businesses place um, value on analytics as both a revenue driver and as a cost-saving opportunity. Um, I'm wondering, Noah, could you tell us kind of how you're applying this to your organization? Yeah, I have, absolutely. I mean, for us, that's part and parcel of our, you know, our whole philosophy or our, our go forward market strategy is the value of analytics um, in the, I mean, in the supply chain arena, right? But how bringing all that data together can uncover insight and through uncovering that insight, you can charter projects. So a lot of what our teams are communicating to our customers are furnished through what we would call like a continuous improvement cockpit. Uh, but having kind of the ability to parse that data from multiple elements of the organization in an embedded fashion uh, back to those stakeholders that helps us communicate that more easily, but also helps us measure and quantify that through time. Uh, and that really helps our internal teams. I think that's a big value driver for us because, uh, you know, while we're communicating this and, and serving it to external clients, our, inter our internal stakeholders and, and analytics teams, right, have to quantify that, have to report that, have to compile that. So having all that in one place, uh, you know, in essence, 
vastly improved our productivity in, in that space. So yeah, value and, and cost drivers, right, in, in the analytics space holistically has, we really look at ThoughtSpot as a, a vehicle for that. Craig, do you find that it's similar at CWT? How, you know, how are you guys um, viewing analytics as a revenue driver at CWT? So in terms of being um, a revenue driver, we, we use it in, in quite a number of ways. So, so as you can imagine, you know, working in, um, I suppose, business travel over the last few years, it's been, uh, been a challenging environment. So any opportunity to increase that revenue or, or reduce that, that loss of revenue, um, has been, has been interesting. And we immediately thought ThoughtSpot would be the right tool to help us help our, our clients understand for those that had to travel, how it was safe to travel and therefore really helping us, you know, maximize and protect that revenue, the little, you know, travel that was around in, in the business. Um, arena to really go out and, and capture that where we could. Um, you know, we, we implemented, as I said before, we've implemented several different data sets, but those, those data sets that allowed to a, know where your travel was, know what the rules and restrictions were and everything else, allowed our customers to have the confidence that they could travel and that they could actually um, go to places with as much safety a, a, as possible. And we're still living in challenging times, and so we're still using it, but with slightly different focus now on that data. Yeah, David, is that um, you know, do do those uh, thoughts also ring true at your organization? How are you guys seeing analytics as a revenue driver? Yeah, there's a few different points to this one. I mean, you know, if I think back to why we we went down this route in the first place, I think one there was. Um, you know, a, a demand for, for getting data synthesized in different ways by our customers. Um, you know, I think there's some, what you might call table state type capabilities that you need in a, in a product like ours that our users expect and ThoughtSpot can help with that. But then the uh, things that ThoughtSpot can help with on top of that, which I think are, you know, the potential new revenue, uh, opportunities for us as a, as a software company, right? So if we can enable the value add capabilities, you know, such as sports IQ or search, um, and, and have that as a, a, like a premium feature, right. Where we can actually charge extra for those capabilities. And, um, you know, we have all the analytics behind that to, you know, evidence how that's been used by different customers. Um, you know, we have, we have our sort of internal sports sport dashboards on top of snowflake today that we can look at. Uh, Snowflake credit usage by customer, right? So we're able to sort of look at that and 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 um, you know charge that back to customers where it's outside of their use policies and and, and so on. So I think there's there's a lot that uh, you can do. Uh, some things I think are just expected, but then there's some real differentiators which I think you can uh, you can charge for. And then I, I think the last point, just on not the the revenue side but the cost side. Yeah, we we have parts of our application today that users can't get all the data out of the system how they would like, and and when they get into a situ situation like that, they're putting tickets into our support teams and having our support teams run those queries for them and generate the results and send them across. And that, you know, they're relatively quick to execute, but there's, they're painful for users, and it is a a drain on our support team. So, again, having having all that stuff more self serve. There's a real efficiency gain there, as well as a customer satisfaction uh, point as well. So, I think there's a lot going on in this in this question. Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, you know, saving time is also saving money. Um, and then I liked what you said about monetizing specific features and turning those on and off in a tool, uh, and and kind of being able to collect on on those gains from that. Um, as well as, uh, you know, working off of um, the monitoring features that a tool like ThoughtSpot has, being able to see exactly how much consumption is happening um, and and kind of quantify the uh, gain from that. I think that's really interesting. Um, to pivot just a little bit, um, you know, we find that, that data security and privacy um, are really a big concern for most companies. 
Um, but even more so, it's a top priority for uh, companies that are building external facing um, user data experiences like yourselves. Um, so Craig, I'm curious, uh, how are you navigating those parts of your deployment around data security, privacy, and governance? Yes, of course. It's, it's an interesting question. Of course, at CWT, we, we take governance and data security very, very seriously. Um, and we work in partnership with our security teams to ensure that all standards and processes are adhered to. We've got a lot of clients that are governmental clients around the world, so not just not just single countries. We're in pretty much every country um, in the world. So, you know, um, with around about 10,000 customers, and customers are your company, not you, um, in all around. So, you know, we have to make sure that we, we're making sure that you're getting access to your data, not to not to somebody else's data. So there are lots of pros in place. And with travel, you get lots of disparate sources that you have to collect your data from. And, you know, with, you know, over 1,600 different data sources that we, we collect in and then distribute it out to over 10,000 customers, as you can imagine, we've got to pay very close attention to that, which, which we do, which we do. And David, how has your organization uh, handled these questions of data security and governance? Yeah, a lot of the same uh, themes and, and techniques. I mean, you, you have to have it as a, a first principle. I think what we try and do is just make sure that we've, we've preempted all all the sort of questions that come up. We've got very good documentation around uh, how we've architected our solutions, how customer data is protected. Uh, really, sort of preempting what uh, an infosec review at one of our customers might look like, um, and and we find that you know ninety five percent of the time that's sufficient, and then. You know, we, we sometimes have to sit down and walk through those uh, with with some customers with, with very unique needs. Um, but yeah, you, you have to sort of, there's no way around this. You, you've just got to make it a priority. And the more upfront work you can do in articulating how you're doing it, um, the less questions and the smoother these processes tend to run. Definitely. Um, you know, as companies are transitioning from maybe on-premise databases towards the cloud and cloud data warehouses, I'm curious, uh, Noah, what, how has the cloud and cloud data warehouses played a role in your company's uh, digital transformation initiatives? Yeah, I mean, holistically, we've converted in, in our own transformation, right, in our, our, our fully cloud-based now. And I think looking at the history and, and evolution in, in our space, uh, again, right to this idea of speed in furnishing data um, is a really key element from from multiple segments. Uh, you know, oftentimes with sensitive products, you know, a lot of times you're looking at temperature control or things like life science or our pharma space, right, where something might need to be addressed if if it goes over a certain threshold and so forth. So when we look at kind of scale and communication of data and piping through our um, our strategy, right. I mean, the cloud and, and data warehousing and the ability of ThoughtSpot to interact with our setup and the flexibility uh, was really key in, in, in how we furnish all of that to, to customers. So, um, you know, really with without that, it's, it's subscale, right? We can't scale the magnitude of data we're trying to uh, communicate with in the categories we're trying to communicate with with our customers. So I think it's, uh, it's almost table stakes at, at this stage, but I'd say our experience, you know, particularly with... Uh, with this embedded experience has been uh, has been seamless and 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 the advancements have been uh, uh, key to our our progress as well. And David, do you feel like the cloud has played kind of a similarly transformational role in your company? It definitely has. Um, yeah, I think all all the things that Noah's mentioned there, we we sort of could, could test to as well. I think the you know the benefits of cloud itself are sort of well understood and well documented. I think, but you know, getting our data into a cloud data warehouse has been a, a real game changer for us. Just some of the op new opportunities that's opened up. You know, as our clients want to access the data that we hold of theirs in different ways, whether that's through ThoughtSpot or directly through our cloud data warehouse or bringing some of their own data together with the data that we hold for different types of analytics, we couldn't do things like that before, at least very easily. You know when when data was was held more in silos on prem somewhere. So, yeah, it, it's uh, it it has it, it it's been a real sort of game changer in terms of just opening up that level of flexibility. Yeah. 
Yeah. And as as we talk about kind of transitioning to the cloud, transitioning toward that self-service analytics piece, um, I guess my question for, for you, Craig, would be, uh, could you tell us maybe a bit about the future of your company and where you see data fitting into that uh, future? Yeah, I suppose that we, we at CWT really value the the collaboration because as a business travel company we we're, we're there to facilitate you know people getting together and 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 using our data it, i suppose it can be thought of like a large conversation with all the many people voicing their opinions so the more the more opinions you get in the more likely you are to be able to find that 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 golden nugget of information that you can that you can get out or that that trend that's going the right or the wrong way and really actually you know take advantage of that so we really see that collaboration and um you know ability or getting the the data message out to more people which is really what thoughtspot helps us um do through their through the search bar and through embedding it within our own um platform or portal really gets us gets us that conversation going between our our people and our customers and customer to customer as well definitely Noah, how do you see um, the future of, of data with your customers at your organization? Yeah, so in terms of future, right, I think the, the main component for us is is category addition. So uh, the ecosystem and landscape is, is really set up and, and facilitates having more elements of data viewed and measured uh, on behalf of our customers. So for example, a key focus for us is sustainability. So when we think of transport and measuring sustainability, whether it's on ocean or air or over the road and the like, we now have a, a framework in place where this becomes another category that we add in. So, you know, key with the concepts of uh, self-service and search, uh, and in addition to the cloud conversation, uh, is really having this framework where it, it facilitates and, and makes easy uh, adding those categories, you know, even though they're complexly uh, connected. Definitely. Thanks, Noah. I think as we kind of come to the end of this conversation, there's probably a lot of people listening um, who could use a bit of advice. Um, maybe they're about to go through some analytics transformation themselves. Uh, um, David, what advice or, or learnings do you have for others leading these kinds of analytics transformation initiatives within their own organizations? Yeah, I think my uh, biggest piece of advice would be to start small, right? So don't try and bite off a huge chunk of complex uh, work. Like, you know, choose a, a simple use case that allows you to get value out soon to your customers that helps sort of validate a lot of the thinking around, you know, the, the bigger picture. Um, and you'll learn a lot from that. And you'll probably rethink some of the uh, some of the architecture, some of the ways you're thinking about bringing data together. And, and you'll fine tune that. So yeah, just try and get a win on the board and, and use that to help fuel more excitement and credibility about what you're trying to do with, with data analytics. Because it's a, it's a long journey, however you look at this. It's important to get some incremental wins along the way. That's great. Noah, what, what advice would you give? <laughs> yeah, I would echo a lot of those comments. I mean, we, we say a lot, embrace the journey. I mean, uh, you know, it happens in phases and and momentum is slow, but really important and critical to get adoption uh, and and embrace, you know, a, a more broader embrace with, within an organization. So uh, yeah, whether it's a phase or a region or a modality, um, you know, similar concept in, in our space as well. Um, start small and then you can build from there or create building blocks from there. Um, I love that advice. Craig, uh, what advice would you have for, for somebody else that might be uh, looking to transform their business with analytics? I think really just stick with it. Find advocates within your target audience and make them look good through use of your platform because they'll be the best salespeople you can get, you know, the people who are using it. So help them win the daily battles with data and, you know, your transformation will come. They'll they'll do it for you. Nice. We've got great sound bites there. It's start small, embrace the journey, and stick with it. That's all you need to know. A big thank you to our presenters, David, Noah, and Craig. That's a wrap on this session. If you'd like to dive further into how to monetize your data, please scan the QR code on your left here for a great best practices blog to get you started. 
We also have a free 30-day trial of ThoughtSpot that we definitely encourage you to check out. Thanks for joining us.